Okay, yep, there we are. We are streaming live. Um, so hi, my name is Tasha Kramer. I'm the Director for Community Health Improvement with the Partnership for a Healthier Carroll County. And joining me today is Dr. Couch. If you can introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, I'm Lucas Couch. Uh, I'm a primary care physician uh, with uh, Carroll Health Group Primary Care uh, in the College Square office, which is uh, near McDaniel College. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us um, today. I know that you're really, really busy. So taking time out of your schedule to do this is, is pretty, pretty awesome that you're doing that. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Um, so if you're joining us on Facebook, um, if you have any questions, we are going to be talking about men's health. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. If they come back, if you do this after our live is over, feel free to email us. We can still get the questions answered for you. So we're going to jump right in. Um, one of the biggest questions, I even asked my husband this question. Um, how do you get more men to see their primary care doctor on a regular basis versus when they're just sick? <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, I'll say, hey, like, it feels like most of the time it's my wife told me I needed an appointment. And, and so here I am. Um, I guess when we think about preventative health, um, the thing to try to know and, and to encourage is uh, we're really kind of focusing on screenings. So it's not having a problem, it's trying to catch it before a problem happens. Um, and so the recommendations are, are for men, you know, and, you know, between the ages of uh, 18 and and 35, you know, every year or two is probably okay. Maybe it doesn't have to be every year. Um, but then kind of once you're 35 and older, kind of get more into the to the yearly habit. Um, and again, it, it's focusing on preventative health. So we prevent the, the things we don't want to have happen from happening or, you know, kind of regular cancer screenings, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> but it, but it's tough yeah it's tough it is really tough i know my husband's like if i'm if i'm not sick i don't need to go to the doctors and yeah. i try to tell him but it's, it, it's, it's, yeah it's, i'm guilty of it too i with med school and like residency i didn't see a doctor for seven years uh until like uh a year and a half ago at this point so <laughs> um so it's just a trait it's just it's all men right it's it's, it's a over majority of men uh, seemingly so <laughs> Um, so speaking of that, what are some top health concerns that men should be aware of? Uh, the kind of usual stuff for, for most people, you know, we're always, you know, want to make sure heart health is okay. Make sure blood pressure is okay. Um, cholesterol screenings or screenings for diabetes at the appropriate times. Um, you know, any kind of routine cancer screening at the appropriate times or, you know, based on kind of family history. Um, and really kind of any time we can, to be honest, you know, I see a lot of a lot of men for kind of simple acute visits when they're sick or this or that. And I, I try to do the best job I can in terms of a plug-in and focusing on some preventative things at that time too, just because if I'm seeing you, I'm going to jam as much in just because I might not see you for another year and a half. Um, but that kind of um, stuff specifically, there are some kind of more men specific screenings out there too. Um, one of the main ones being like prostate cancer, um, depending on family history and age and, and symptoms. Um, and then there's also a, um, an artery screening uh, looking for something called an abdominal aortic aneurysm, which is an enlarged aorta kind of in your stomach near your kidneys. Um, and there's a, a good evidence that shows that if we screen men at, you know, at a certain age, if they've ever smoked, um, you know, that's the risk factor. So there are a couple more specific to men's screenings that are out there, but mm -hmm. for the most part, it's what we, we do for, for everyone. Okay. Are there any types of self screenings that men can do at home? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, the main one is kind of reproductive health, I guess, you know, um, that would be like testicular cancer or, you know, skin cancer or things like that. So I think it's always important to be aware of your body. And so, you know, if you're in the shower 
and you see you know, like a, a mole or you know what a freckle that's changing or getting bigger or if your wife sees one or partner and they're like oh that, you know maybe you should get that checked out you know that's a reason to come see us um in terms of um reproductive health you know if you see any lesions or you know spots on your penis or you know feeling your testicles and if you feel like a like a mass or something that, that's growing that's a, a reason to be seen and ideally we're you know we're, i'm trying to plug that in you know with teenagers you know starting you know, 14, 15, and, you know, it doesn't have to be something you do every day, but like once a month, like, does everything feel like it usually does type thing. Um, uh, otherwise, a, a screening they could do on their own would, would be like a blood pressure cuff. You know, most of the electronic blood pressure cuffs are, are, are good enough these days. And it's not to say you have to check your blood pressure every day, but, you know, maybe once every few months, you know, you want to do it the right way. You don't want to like, be coming in from from work or driving and stressed out and sit down and check it right away because I can guarantee it's going to be high but you know kind of a quiet part of your day where you've been sitting down for you know five to 15 minutes check it once you know and, and most of the machines will tell you if it's high and if it's high go see your doctor you know just it's not to say you're going to end up on a medicine you know the first kind of treatment and check is to recheck and make sure it's actually high um and those are those are kind of the, the main ones i can i can think about off the, the top of my head in terms of like self screenings that a that a man could do a man could do so you mentioned about prostate health um so what is actually the prostate and why is its health so important uh so pro the prostate is this a little organ um that is part of what contributes to uh the fluid in semen um so it's uh, anatomically, um, it's kind of situated between like the, the scrotum or, you know, where the testicles sit and the, the anus kind of in about an inch or two inches. Um, and the reason we kind of worry about it is because in men, when they're older, you know, over age 55, you know, it's one of the places we you know, men can get uh, cancer. Um, there's no like you can't there's no good way to self-check um to be honest and there's recommendations against that mm -hmm. um the current recommendations for for prostate cancer right now or at least from a primary care perspective is you know men over age 55 or if there's a concerning family history so um you know my brother or my dad were found to have prostate cancer before age 65 or if you're having um, problems, you know, peeing or with erections that are kind of new and out of the ordinary, you know, go see and talk to your doctor. Um, being African-American or, or black, you know, it's a risk factor for prostate cancer. They, they see it at higher rates. So, you know, that's a, it's a population where I would kind of like, eh, screening is probably good for you. Um, mm -hmm. If you've ever used steroid, whether prescribed or not, um, like testosterone for, you know, a decent amount of time that can affect your prostate, make it enlarged and um, increase your chance for prostate cancer. Um, or if you really have any other concerns. Um, so that, like I said, the current screenings are 55 um, plus considering risk factors. Um, and the recommended screening for primary care is to just do blood work. So just a PSA. Um, there's actually a recommendation against doing uh, prostate exams themselves right now per the um, American Academy of Family Practice and um, USPSTF, which are the kind of the larger screening organizations. And part of that is I, we just don't do them as often as like urologists do. It's a very subjective exam. Um, so we do blood work and based on those results that kind of determine screening and then we do screening every year. Um, that being said, even though prostate cancer is kind of you know one of the top three leading causes of, of death in men in terms of cancer. Um, you know, there's really no perfect test, and it's kind of up to you. You know, the kind of saying we learn in medical school and in, in medicine is, you know, if a man lives long enough, most are probably going to end up with some stage of prostate cancer. But if you look at the like the statistics and odds of things, you're much more likely to die of something else, even if you have prostate cancer. Um, so. The, the recommendation is, is, is to see your doctor and have a conversation and mm -hmm. see if it's something you want to do, if it's right for you to do based on family history, other things like that, um, and kind of go from there. Okay. 
And a PSA test, is that a blood test or a urine test or? Yeah, it's just, it's a blood draw. Um, and so we get levels, you know, ideally we want men to be under four, you know, if it's between four and 10, you know, we have cause for concern and I'm going to say, hey, we need to go see a urologist and, you know, do some more repeat blood testing or, or do something. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have prostate cancer because it can be elevated for a number of reasons. And if it's above 10 or above certain levels, sometimes it's a little bit more like this is probably, you know, it is until we prove it's not type thing. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking at. But we're constantly coming out with new tests and things like that. And, and hopefully in the new future, there is a, there is a better screening and a better test. Um, right. That's good to know. It's good to have those conversations too with your doctor, especially when, you're, when you have a family history of those kinds of things. So I'm going to switch a little bit and talk about, this is a question that I've had and lots of women. Why is it that it seems that men can lose weight so much faster than women? Uh, part of that is uh, related to hormones. Um, and biologically, humans are a species that show um, sexual dimorphism. And that is a biological term that means that the difference is physically between the male and then the female gender of the species is, is vastly different. You know, you know, if you look at a dog, unless you look at their, you know, their private parts, a lot of times you're not going to be able to tell, you know, the sizes are pretty consistent, um, this and that. Uh, and it varies across the animal species, you know, and, and hyenas, females are actually the larger um, gender and they actually have a, uh, a vestigial organ that kind of looks like a penis and like for years like biologists actually were getting it wrong um, but like in humans you know men tend to be taller um, with testosterone we tend to put on more muscle um, estrogen um, tends to focus more on having a little bit more body fat and, and there's a biological need for that you know women can get pregnant they have to to grow another human being which is really pretty cool um, and so to be able to do that, there needs to be different needs. And then women get pregnant too, and that can kind of wreak havoc on, on, on hormones and this and that. And, you know, a lot of women come back and say, my body never feels the same. And so, you know, all these things are kind of contributing to it, but um, the kind of the basic answer is testosterone leads to more muscle mass, um, a little bit higher metabolism kind of baseline for men versus women. Um, and so that's why it kind of has the appearance of, you know, they make one little change and, you know, all of a sudden they're, mm -hmm. um, you know, down five or 10 pounds and I've been struggling for months. Um, but my plug in there um, in terms of weight loss for, for men and women, really um, a lot of it is, is, is diet and what we eat and the other kind of smaller part is exercise. Um, I, I see a lot of patients and, you know, I just need to get into the gym more. Um, and that, that's an important part of it. Um, but, you know, I can, I like to run and I can tell you, I can go run for an hour. I'll burn 600 to 1000 calories based on how fast I'm going this or that. Um, but I can eat 2000 calories in 10 minutes. And so the biggest bang for your buck is what you're putting into your body. Um, and if you talk to any bodybuilder, you can, you know, you can work out till the cows come home and, and lift every day and this and that. But if your nutrition is not right, it doesn't matter. And so, you know, what we're eating for, for both sexes um, matters a lot. Um, and, you know, physical exercise is really just kind of an augmentation to kind of help with that. Well, this was very informational. I'm going to make sure my husband watches this later today. <laughs> is there anything you'd like to add or anything that we should know that men should maybe like be asking their doctors for or anything like that? Uh, no, uh, you know, hopefully there are a lot out there watching, but the main thing is, is just to go establish with your family doctor, um, you know, talk to them about routine preventative health. Like what is it I can be doing and should be doing? Um, and the other side is I think it's important to like, you know, like your family doctor too. If you see someone and, you know, I, I, you can't be friends with everyone. Right. But with your doctor, I think you kind of should be friends with them. You, mm -hmm. There's a lot of evidence that shows that, you know, if we do all the right screenings at the right times, we're going to keep our population healthier and this and that. But um, there's also 
a decent amount of evidence that having good relationship with your family doctor or primary care person does the same thing. Um, you know, if I'm seeing my, my primary care person and I don't like them, I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to put off going to see him if I have this little nagging issue. Whereas if you like him and it's a little nagging, you're like, eh, no, I like him. You know, he's going to say, and eh, no, this is something we should be worried about. Or no, I think this is okay. Or, you know, that's how we catch things early too. And so, um, you know, hopefully there's enough of us around, you know, but you should be able to find someone you like. Um, and that's also part of it too. Well, thank you for taking time today. I know you've got a busy schedule and you're keeping busy. So thank you for taking time to join us today. All right. No, thanks for having me. It was, it was good talking.